right, I edit these videos, so. Hey guys, Roy here from Your Golf Travel. I'm in South Wales, I'm at McInnes Peninsula Golf and Country Club. Jack Nick's design. I've actually played here a couple of years ago with my dad. But I'm gonna shoot around the course today, show you guys what it's all about, this golf course. But the next three holes, we're gonna do an interesting little challenge. I'm gonna do position golf versus aggressive golf. I will play the shot which, looking at the course planner, I might think to play if I was trying to just plod my way around, get myself in position, not do anything too crazy. Then I'm gonna play a second ball Uber, uber aggressive with driver and just see the difference between the two scores after three holes. I'm going to do the same with my approach shots. So I'm going to attempt to play for the, like, the big portions of the green and be conservative with that first ball. Second ball, I'm going to go straight at the pin in theory. Obviously with the way my game is, it might not make any difference at all because I can hit any club in the bag off the planet. So we'll see if there is a difference between being boring or going for the aggressive shots. Three hole challenge, then we're going to take to the rest of the course, show you guys what it's all about to come and play golf here at McInnes Peninsula. Right guys, so it was extremely windy at McInnes Peninsula, so I'm just jumping in here to kind of narrate what's going on because the audio is just all whacked out. So as you can see, I've hit my tee shot into the left-hand trap. This is what we're looking at for the second shot in here on the par five third. Um, my decided to lay up with a six iron, which is the club I've got in my hands right now. Um, and I'm just kind of trying to leave myself kind of a wedge, kind of 90, 100 yard shot in at the moment. I've actually found the other fairway bunker. So, obviously I would never do this in a game situation, but let's see how far I can get with three wood out of this. The hyper-aggressive play, the stupid play. Absolutely gunned it up the left. Um, as good a shot as I can really hit with that sort of club from the fairway bunker. So let's go and see where the six iron, the negative or conservative, defensive type of shot ended up. Right, failed the six iron, the conservative approach out to the right, just here, just short of the fairway bunker I thought I might have snuck into. If we spin around, we might not be able to see it from here, but three would absolutely ripped it. It's all the way up here, almost pin high. That could be one of the better shots I've ever hit. Um, so a lot of work to do for the conservative ball to come out on top here. Right, so up at the uh, the six iron hit out to the right, I've actually left myself 99 yards, so bang in that 90 to 100 yard range, which I was trying to do. I've got 52 degree wedge here. Wind is actually off the right at this stage and slightly helping as well. And I can see where my three wood's been uh, from where I am now, and I'm kind of under a little bit of pressure to hit this one close. Struck it nicely, almost straight at it. I'm um, thinking it was a really good shot. And then unfortunately, oh, I've carried that literally like three yards too long. I thought it was all over it. Right, three wood ball located. As I said, almost pin high and a relatively simple chip shot coming up. And the shot I just hit with the wedge is just pitch back edge of this hump and just rolled down to here. So maybe this is where the idea of strokes gained comes into play. Obviously that three wood from the bunker was a highly risky shot, could have gone wrong but I've pulled it off and look how much I, in theory, might have gained. This should be hopefully up and down, maybe for a birdie. And now I'm struggling to get up and down with a conservative ball for par. Right, I've got options from here, in all honesty. I could try and slide onto the green with a more lofted club, but I'm gonna try and be a little bit cute with a nine iron, just run it onto the green and down that slope. Could be good. Go! Go! Yeah, it's about six feet. It's definitely a lot better than the wedge from 100 yards. Chipping up and over a bit of a slope, underplayed it, struck it okay actually, just didn't throw it far enough. So yeah, I mean, my 
my conservative ball is really up against it on the first hole of this experiment already. Uh, now putting for a par and from about 20 feet, just lag it up there, decent pace, but shoved it up to the right a little bit. Right, so that's down in six with the conservative ball. Not my best chip shot. It wasn't exactly easy. I was trying to land it on this down slope throw a bit further than I did. But yeah, I don't think I'd ever score much worse than a six taking the conservative approach like that. But look at the gains I've potentially got here. Where I've now got this six foot of a birdie with the aggressive ball thanks to that. If I don't say so myself, quite brilliant three wood. Right, the birdie wasn't to be, unfortunately, with the aggressive ball, but straight away I've gained a shot there and the stress-free par versus the six is very welcome indeed. On to the fourth hole, let's continue the experiment. Right guys, par four fourth, and as you can see, there's a water hazard which snakes across the middle of the fairway. So this is my conservative tee shot, and probably the tee shot that I would take more often than not. I'm just hitting four iron here, just trying to miss the fairway bunk in the middle of the fairway. Absolute grip to lovely high draw, and just missed it left. It was an absolutely perfect shot, so I was really happy with that. But let's change over now and uh, grab the driver. And as you can see from that course plan, if you skip back a little bit, there's not a lot of room to aim into. I'm gonna have to take it up the left because the water has the kind of snakes a bit further up the hole, the further up you go. So really bringing that into play if I push this right or hit it down the middle. So I'm trying to aim left portion of the fairway. And like I said, there's a tiny little sliver which I have to hit it into. Uber aggressive. This is obviously gonna gain me a lot if I pull it off. Uh, so the question is, same wind direction, a little bit off the right and helping. Can I hit a high draw with the driver? And here we go. Yes, I absolutely nutted that one. This video could have turned into a bit of a farce had I been hitting it a little bit worse off the tee, but luckily that was a really, really good shot with the driver. So just finding my tee shot right in the middle of the fairway, exactly where I aimed it with that four iron off the tee, plenty short of the water, so in no trouble whatsoever going in there. Right, 200 yards left in. Uh, downwind and off the right again. I'm gonna try and actually get there with a six. Bunker just left of where the pin is, I'm going to try and aim right side of the green, so again, fairly conservative from where I am. Um, yeah, just hope for a very good strike, because this is all of the six for me, with this win. Oh, I've thinned it. I've thinned it into that bunker, or maybe over it. Oh my god, that's so lucky. I've actually bounced both bunkers and I think I'm back left of the green now. Right guys, where did the driver end up? Well, this is the line I was trying to take it over, basically this portion of the water hazard. And you realise how narrow this part is in comparison with obviously the space I was hitting that four iron into. And then if I block it right slightly, the fact that the water hazard snakes a little bit further up the hole, this brings this really into play. I reckon that's almost where I'm carrying it into if I do block that right. But walking up, see where the buggy is now. I've actually hit a lovely high draw, maybe even pitching onto that down slope. Perfect line for where I was aiming. And I've left myself with just 95 yards into the screen. So 105 yard difference, just because I was massively aggressive with that driver for the tee. Luckily I hit a really good shot and pulled it off. So you can see what we're getting at here. Not only did I obviously give myself a better chance of hitting the fairway with the four iron, that was an easy shot, but I've left myself a six iron, maybe even a five from 200 yards into a green that's fairly well protected by bunkers. Taking the massively aggressive play, again, there's obviously risk attached to that. I've left myself a little flick with a wedge, and I'm hoping, despite the fact that I am the thin bullet and I'm pants with wedges, I can hit the green from here. Right guys, 95 yards left in after that fantastic driver. Um, but I've got a 56 degree wedge and I would be really disappointed if this shot doesn't get inside the thin kind of skanky two iron that I hit from 200 yards, even though I'm not great with wedges. 
I would still expect to get this a lot closer than that uh, on average with a large kind of sample size of golf balls. Hit a fairly nice shot straight at it. Um, underplayed it slightly, struck it well, but it, considering this is a mediocre wedge, it's still middle of the green, uh, about 20 feet. Right, so the six iron from 200 has finished up just off the left of the green. As I said from back in the fairway, it was actually extremely lucky to get where it did. It's pitched over the first bunker, bounced this second one, and run up the corner of the green to about here. It's got a fairly straightforward chip, uh, just got 52 degrees. I'm gonna bump it down the slope, try and get it close, try and get it up and down for a par. As we spin around, you can see where the sand wedge finished. That's a fairly mediocre sand wedge, but it's still, well, hopefully gonna be an easy two putt par. Quick disclaimer, I have brought the wrong club. I would usually play nine iron from here um, and just bump it down there, but the buggy's too far away to go and get it. And there's people right behind me. Let's see what we can do with 52. Not very much. Really stabby into that juicy rough. Not good at all. Yeah, not a good chip, not a great second, but you see what I'm saying is that because I was so far back putting myself in positions like that, I'm giving myself opportunities to make these little mistakes which add up as you get down the hole and ended up leaving myself a good 18 feet for par, whereas now I've got 25 footer for birdie with the aggressive ball. That's a gimme par with the aggressive ball. Two shots better off with aggression. Who'd have thought it? Right guys, par four, fifth hole here at McInnes. Dog leg round to the right. There's a couple of pot pottish looking fairway bunkers straight up the middle of the fairway. The first one, according to the course plan, is 222. Wind straight into it, I'm just hit two iron stinger straight at that. That's the conservative ball. And that's typically what I would do on this hole because it's not a very long hole. Then I'm going to smash driver, and because it's dog leg left to right and into the wind, I'm going to take it fairly aggressive over the corner. But if I get it even slightly wrong, I'm going to get spinning up into that wind. And I think, you know, that the conservative ball might be getting a shot back here, maybe even two. Right, two iron stinger. I haven't hit one of these for a while, so. Feeling a bit apprehensive to be honest with you. And that bunker is my idea. And that's perfect. A little bit right where it's aiming, but really good strike. Safe as houses, as they say. Now, this is what I'm worried about. Don't particularly like hitting driver into the wind. But if I get a flight like I did on the last, it should be fine over that bunker on the right in theory a bit nervous about this one to be honest with you oh and i've hit it massively left off the planet snap hook see you later told you the two iron would get some shots back right guys two iron located got 140 into the green or oh, hazard short bunker short as well and my driver is like somewhere over there um, in the jungle. And as you can see behind me, there is actually plenty of room if I'd ha hit a decent drive. And I reckon I'd give myself a, at least another 50 yards, maybe further up the fairway. So it's 140 from here and I'd be close to 100 up there. Um, into this wind, I don't know whether I'd prefer this shot with a slightly less loft so I can punch it low or whether I'd be risking fanning a wedge up into the air, but we'll see how we get on with the two iron ball. We'll see if I can make a par and scrounge at least two shots. Cause let's be honest, if I hit another driver, I might do that again. Um, the risk was definitely there in that tee shot. And as I said, I was not feeling comfortable. It's only 140 from here. Um, and there's a huge amount of green to the right and a bit short of the pin. Because of that wind straight into it, I'm gonna actually hit six, which is a lot of club, but I'm just trying to flight it down. I think I can go at the pin or right of it and be fairly safe. Um, let's see how we get on. I've actually come, across, come over the top of that, pulled it miles left. It's just about hung on to the back left rough. 
Right guys, having just punched that six iron in a little bit too low and definitely too far left, I think I kind of pitched it around here, just run through to the back. And as I said, very lucky to stop short of the jungle. But from there, if my backswing's not hampered, got a fairly simple pitch down to the pin. Hopefully I can get up and down for a par. Just about. Just about. Right guys, par five, sixth hole here at McInnes. I've just dropped down to one golf ball. Three old challenges over. We'll discuss what I think about the whole attack versus defend thing when we get to the end of this hole. To finish part one, uh, but just thought I'd show you this par five six hole and I'm going to hit two iron for my second bit. Perfect tee shot. I've got about 220 into the wind, so this won't quite get there. But I'm not particularly feeling trying to cut three wood up into the wind. I think three wood's a bit too much for it. This should get close, so it's kind of aggressive. Good strike, up the right. Bounce, shake, go! Yeah, off the right of the green, I don't think that'll be a difficult shot from there. So attack versus defend, obviously that's a tiny sample size I'm playing with there. I'm only just going with that idea, that challenge for three holes. Um, but I think what I would draw from it is that obviously golf is totally situational. We all know that. And there's going to be pros and cons to both approaches depending on the situation. Having said that, I totally see where if I'm being aggressive and I'm hitting good shots, that ball is going to win all day long. So on the days, let's say when I'm playing in a competition on my home course and I'm playing well, I need to start thinking about being really aggressive to maximize my opportunity to score low. Having said that, if I'm playing badly or even mediocre for me, because obviously we all know I can spray it which way, every which way, sorry. Maybe a bit of conservatism here, here and there would serve me well. So let me know what you think. When you play golf, are you thinking about maximizing your potential and attack, attack, attack? and the idea of strokes gained, which I'll be floating around social media a lot at the moment, or do you prefer to err on the side of caution, play strategically, and get your ball around that way? Let me know below, post some comments on your thoughts versus really aggressive golf versus defensive golf, or do you like to find yourself somewhere in between? Anyway, part one, all done at McInnes Peninsula. I'm gonna head on to the seventh hole now, show you guys part two, and we're gonna chat a little bit about what it's like to not only come down and play this golf course, but other golf courses in the area. Maybe if you're looking to do a Swansea golf tour. Thanks a lot, post some comments, subscribe, hit the like button, do all that magic, and I'll see you on the seventh hole.